really quick question that recently came up in my YouTube um, channel on Reflections from the Saddle where um, at mmm.tr or dash tr3cm wrote and said I have a draft cross that is powerfully that is powerful behind and likes to run through the changes with a stiff back I've been doing changes on the curves and it's helping to gain control after the change. Could you talk next time a little bit about a concept of round versus flat back and how to get there? Not so much in the changes, but just in general. So there's a couple things I have to say about that. Number one is um, there's a couple things you have to, to make sure that's not going on. The horse doesn't have any lameness issue that's that's creating the problem and the horse is not in pain in any way that is creating the problem. Okay. So that's always number one, no matter what's going on. Um, and because the horse has to, in order to stay through. So what is throughness? Throughness is the ability to push off equally with both hind legs. That energy comes up through the hind leg, like through all the joints, the fetlock, the hock, the stifle, uh, the hip, the SI, into the lumbar, like through all those joints, through all the muscle, through all the tendons and ligaments, through the fascia in a very smooth, even way. And then the horse has to be able to coil the, the, the loins, has to be able to raise and, and um, like engage the psoas muscle, has to be able to like tuck the hind end underneath of it has to be able to engage the paravertebrals, the multifidus muscles, uh, all those core muscles around the spine in order to lift the back. Then the horse has to be able to engage, and this will, will all depend on the level as to how much engagement we have, but then the horse has to be able to engage and um, engage the thoracic sling so that they're actually like lifting their withers. They're able to hold that part of them like and suck up their withers, right? And be able to like, this is why horses that are really through and on the bit look like they're like a hand taller than what they really are. And then from that, they have to have the energy that then goes up through all the vertebrae of the neck, through all of the pole, um, and then into the bridle. And so, so everything from like their hoof to their teeth has to be um, in really good shape and pain-free, right? For that total throughness. And so, one, we have to make sure that, you know, we know what what the horse's issue is as far as is there any pain or soundness issue, right? And then, and, and that doesn't mean that just because they have that, that we just give up, but there is management, right? That's what our vets are there for, to help us manage those um, those things. And I have a really good picture here that I'm going to include in this video that kind of shows it's the finding the correctness in the PF is what it's called, but it really basically shows like when that system is totally working a hundred percent, what the horse looks like in the PF, and then some variations of when it doesn't work that well. Okay. So that's kind of the whole idea of how the back rounds. And this is why people always say the horse goes on the bit from the, um, the horse goes on the bit from the hind legs and not from the bridle, right? Because the horse will naturally just bascule the neck up and out to the bridle if all the other pieces are in place and the horse is not in pain. So whenever I am, and then the second way, let me talk about this. The second way that I think about my riding all the time is in a therapeutic sense, in a physical therapy type sense, because every horse is gonna have an issue uh, there's asymmetries all the time. So there's going to be issues with them that they're just going to have a natural crookedness to them. And they're going to have, you know, some areas that are strong and some areas that are weak. And some of this is just confirmation. And some of this is maybe past training. And it's, 
you, it's, it's sometimes hard to figure out, you know, is this pain related? Is it, um, you know, just a weakness in the horse? Is this something that, and that's hard because horses can be very stoic. And this is one of the things that makes riding so difficult and why sometimes we have to have a little grace with one another as we're trying to figure this out with our various horses. But I always want to look at my riding as like therapy for the horse that I am helping them to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. And how can I figure out where they need my help? Um, how can I help help them? Like what exercises do I need to do? What part of their body do I need to bring awareness to? Um, and that is like the physical therapy part of riding. And like what, if this horse needs to loosen up its rib cage, what can I do while I'm working it on the ground or what can I do when I'm working it um, in hand or under saddle that can help them, um, you know, understand that part of their body better. And because they all have these crookedness or natural, as or yeah, natural asymmetries. And so I want to talk about like three different balances that whenever I'm having a problem with my horse, I always go back to the basics, right? So if I'm having problems in the changes, yes, it's sometimes really nice to have an exercise to do in the change that addresses the problem I'm having. But a lot of times I have to go back and say, okay, what's my canner like? You know, is, um, or if I'm having trouble in a, a trot half pass, what's my trot like? What do I need to improve in my trot? And so in, in the canter, it's like, do in the flying changes, you know, is my canter good? Is it on my aids? Does it have the right balance? Um, what are my canter walks like? So not just what is my canter quality like, but what is my canter walks like? Um, and really work on those transitions, canter walk canters being super good, my counter canter being good, all of that uh, is so important to come back to the change and make the change better. And I like to look at it in three different ways. So horizontal balance, right? That's front to back, that's nose to tail. Um, that balance is you know, is my horse dumping on the forehand or they have the ability to, care, you know, be more in self-carriage? Do they have the ability to um, start to weight the hind legs more and more as they go up through the levels? So that's horizontal balance. And your expectations will of that will be dependent on where the horse is on the training scale. Like, do they... Um, you know, are they, are they training level? Or am I, have I just started riding them or are they third level or are they FEI level? Like, where are they? And then the second balance is vertical balance. So if horizontal balance is front to back, uh, vertical balance is side to side, right? So that's like a horse, like when we talk about the Jovi wants to sort of lean to the left a little bit, that's his vertical balance is off. Um, when we, when you have a horse that wants to lean in a direction or weight a certain leg um, or drift out in a circle or drift in in a circle, like that's a vertical balance, right? So that's your second balance that you have to work on. So if you're ever having a problem, no matter what it is that you're doing, um, you always want to look at what's the horizontal balance, what's the vertical balance, what's the straightness? Is that horse... Um, and I don't mean like arrow straight, yes, sometimes arrow straight, but also bending straight. Like, is my horse able to push off equally with both hind legs? And that goes entirely through, like that goes through his entire body, all the way from the hoof, all the way to the nose. And then the third one is the lateral balance. And so lateral balance is about that ability to bend, right? To the, that ability to have that C curve in their body. And I know like, we could get into the semantics of they don't exactly have that, but that's an anatomical lesson. We're not going to go there. We're just going to talk about that, that lateral balance. So like, can I do a shoulder in? Are they able to bring that right hind underneath of them? Are they able to flex in their rib cage and to bring their shoulders up into the inside and have the freedom in the shoulder and the self carriage? Um, you know, and we do this with all of the lateral work. So that's lateral work can help lateral balance. Um, but that's the next balance. So if you're having trouble in the changes that I would imagine that probably there's a little bit, there might be a horizontal balance issue, but maybe you can keep the horizontal balance 
but then you probably have to really work on the lateral balance, right? So that they're not blocking you and just pushing off. It sounds like the horse has a push off uh, ability with the hind legs, but not a carrying ability with the hind legs. And the more that you work on a gymnasticizing the ability for the hind legs to coil and carry, the better your changes will be. So long answer, but I hope that helps.